Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you very much because you brought us to this Congress. Thank you because you preserved our lives until this time. We bless your name because your mercy, your goodness, your love, your grace has been upon our lives. Thank you for the privilege of ministering in your own kingdom so that we can bring others to the kingdom of God. And we thank you for a time like this when we can come together and be refreshed in the things of the Lord so that with new strength and zeal we can reach out again and preach your word with more understanding, with more anointing, with more zeal. And we are praying that the time we spend together this week here, you will enrich our souls and bless every one of us in Jesus' name. We are praying that you protect our heart, protect our spirit, protect our attitude, protect us physically and spiritually, so that you'll build the hedge around us and nothing negative will be able to infiltrate to hinder us from getting the best from you in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you prepare us and purge us so that everything you send from above will be able to get in Jesus' name. Help us to fix our attention upon you, to think about you, to meditate upon your word, and to receive everything you have for every one of us in Jesus' name. Keep us awake now. Keep us alert so that we will not sleep as we listen to your word now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I welcome every one of you to the Congress of this year. In Jesus' name. Amen. And since this is my first time of seeing you in this new year, and today is 1st of January, um, I want to say unto you, Happy New Year in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that this year, the purpose of God, the plan of God, will be fulfilled in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And the things that have been impossible and difficult in the past, I pray that this year for you will be a year of realization, a year of fulfillment, a year of accomplishment. As we approach the first message of the Congress, I want to tell you that this message is one for the Congress, two it is for this year, and three, it is for your entire life. The topic is, it's best, it's test, and it's rest. Three words that are very, very important. It's best, test, and rest. Another Congress time, you know already, is here. The first week of this January 1996. The Congress can all shine for each of us god's best for the life that we live and for the ministry that he has called us into if we will allow god to speak to work and to bless without interruption and without resistance i want to remind you that we fix the congress in the first week of the year like this why do we do that number one so that as we come together at the beginning of the year We'll be able to fill up our empty cups as we launch into the activities of the new year. Number two, it's so that we can be refreshed. Many things happened in the passing year. And we became weary, perhaps, and tired, perhaps. And we come before the Lord on this uh, first day of the Congress and the first week of the year so that we'll be able to refresh ourselves and strengthen are we resource to face the challenges of the new year? Number three, it is so that we can brighten our vision. To see very clearly what the Lord is calling us into in the new year. It's the week to make our plans. It's the week to rethink the call of God upon our lives. It is the week to brighten up the future so that we'll be able to face all that the Lord has called us to. Number four, it is so we can begin the journey of the year in God's power. When you start the first week of the year with hearing the word of God, with enriching your souls with uh, the songs of the choir and uh, with praying and knocking at the gate of heaven, 
you get the power of God upon your life and then you are able to run the race that is set before you. Number five, it is to prepare to run that race with fresh vigor, fresh understanding of the divine rules. Any athlete will tell you that for each game they play and for each thing they get involved with, there are rules for the game. And if they do not have a fresh new understanding of the rules of the game, they are not likely to be able to run and run to the desired destination. And we come together the first week of the year like this so that once again we'll be able to have a fresh understanding of the divine rules. Number six is to put on the armor of God for the oncoming battles of the year. As we look back to the passing years, we've seen some battles that were not well prepared for and some battles that we lost. Some battles we couldn't have the victory. And now we want to have the armor of God upon our lives so that we'll be able to get ready for the battles that may come. Number seven, it is to refill our lamps with oil. We want to be like the wise virgin that had the extra oil so that this light of ours will keep on shining brightly in the new year. If we started the year without clearly defined goals and without clearly defined plans, church leaders like that who just launch into the new year, no plan, no goal, nothing new at all, they'll wander aimlessly throughout the rest of the year. That's the reason we are beginning the year with our ears open to the voice of the captain. And we are asking him, O oh Lord, what will thou have us to do? We've done much in the passing years. Now a new year has come. A year of service. A year of worship. A year of ministration. And we come before the Lord this first week of the year. And we're saying, Lord, what will thou have us to do? And as we think about the words in the message, we need to understand that God has provided and promised the best for every one of us. Although he has provided, although he has promised, we need to prepare for his very best. And therefore, as we look at the best and the test and the rest, we want to understand that these words are not just similar in spelling, but they are very important milestones in the life of a child of God. I could point to ministers of the gospel, those that did something, accomplished something in Bible days and even in contemporary times. And you'll find those three words in their lives. You think about Abraham. God promised him the best. Then he passed through a test and eventually he possessed the rest. And you think about Joseph. God promised him the best. He passed through a test and eventually possessed the rest of the Lord. Are you thinking about the children of Israel as they journeyed from Egypt to enter into the land of Canaan, the land of rest? God promised them the best. In the wilderness, they passed through a test and then eventually they entered into the rest, into the land of promise. You are thinking about David. God gave him the very best. But then you know that before he came to the throne, there was a test he had to pass through. And eventually he rested in the bosom of the Lord. You think about Daniel. Oh yes, the Lord promised him the very best. But you know in Babylon he went through a test before the rest eventually came. Well, we can go through all the prophets one by one. All the apostles one by one. You'll see that pattern in their life that God promised the best. Yet they persevered in the test before they entered into the rest. And those are the three points we're talking about. Number one, God's best for faithful servants. As we are the servants of the Lord, and we're the soldiers of Christ, and we're the ministers of the gospel, and we're the ambassadors of Christ, the representatives of the kingdom of heaven, the Lord is telling us he requires faithfulness from us. And as we are going to be faithful, he wants us to know that the best is awaiting every one of us. Number one, God's best for faithful servants. Number two, great test and wrestling of favored saints. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. There is a test, 
There is a wrestling for the favored saints of God if we're going to eventually enter into his race. So that brings on point number two, the great test and wrestling of favored saints. Number three, glorious rest of fearless souls. Glorious rest of fearless souls. We go to point number one, God's best. The very best. Now, as you are called into the ministry, you are thinking about yourself, number one, as a Christian. You are thinking about yourself, number two, as a servant of God, a minister of the gospel. What is the promise of the Lord for you? And as we look at the pro these promises of the Lord, can we really genuinely say we understand this is the very best the Lord can promise you for life and for ministry. Let's look at them. And as we look at them, appropriate them. Appropriate them. Uh, if you think about the promise of God, uh, it goes through a process before it eventually brings out the result in your life. And the first process is investigation. You look at the word of God, you investigate the word of God, you examine the word of God, you dish out, you dig out the promises of the Lord. That is a step one in, what, in you wanting to have the promises of God. Number one, investigation. Number two is incubation. Incubation means that you want to hash that egg. And therefore you have the hen brooding over it, staying over it, warming it, and giving it someone to prepare for the chick inside to come out and to grow out. And therefore you have incubation. And uh, when you have that, you have taken that promise of God. You have investigated that promise of God. You have dug out that promise of God. And then you brood over it. You meditate on it. You see it on it. You roll it over in your mind. And you repeat it over for yourself. So that this promise of God will become your personal, personal possession. And then as uh, you have that, eventually you begin to see that the scripture has the lives of other people. Now you want fruit for your labor. From verse 25. Yea, the all children. Your children to start with in your own personal family. Your sister of the gospel is wanting in his life and family. It is that the lives of his own children will uh, cooperate, uh, will accomplish the same thing, or will live such. They will live such lives that their lives will support the gospel, will represent the gospel, and will fulfill, demonstrate everything he has been teaching in the Word of God. And if you already have uh, children that are almost becoming wayward and they're going out of the way, the Lord says, He's preparing the best for you this year. And He says, All your children shall be taught of the Lord. Not only that, your children here also means your converts. You have your converts and you wonder sometimes these converts are they learning? Are they getting it? Are they developing? Are they growing? Are they coming up to maturity? It says, all your converse will be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. In Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60, reading from verse 20. Thy sun shall no more go down. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light. And the days of thy mourning, of thy suffering, of thy sorrow shall be ended. In verse 21, thy people also shall be all righteous. God says he's going to deal with this problem of backsliding in your congregation. That your converts, your people, those members of the church upon whom the Lord has made you an overseer or a pastor or a teacher. He says they will be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Is your fellowship small? Look at verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand. And a small one, a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. That's the best the Lord is promising us this year. If we are faithful and if we remain on the word of God, the Lord is going to fulfill all those things in Jesus' name. In John chapter 14. John 
chapter 14 reading from verse 12 in this verse the lord jesus was promising his own disciples the very best they could ever expect in ministry in uh, this verse 12 very late very late i say unto you he that believeth on me the works that i do shall he also do what else are you expecting what other promise do you want for you to have success and victory and accomplishment in the ministry that God has committed to your hand. It says the works that I do, he shall also do. And greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. This year will be wonderful. Yeah. The promises of the Lord will follow you through this year. Yeah. As the Lord is telling you on all this on the very first day of the first month of the year the lord has a good purpose and a good plan for your life and ministry and he will not fail he will fulfill what he has said and great and mighty works will be coming through you in jesus name actually we know that god in his love cannot offer less than the best to any of his children or to any of his servants already has given us the lord jesus christ and the bible tells us that if he has given us the lord jesus christ how much more will he not be able to give us and will he not be willing to give us all other things freely together with the lord jesus christ in romans chapter 8 and in verse 32 romans chapter 8 verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things therefore we can raise our heads in joy knowing that we're going to be more than conquerors we have victors already and we're going to overcome in jesus name he has called us and faithfully see who has called us he'll fulfill all the promises he has made unto us he has promised that he will bless our ministry he will he will reward our service and he will without his blessing we'll be laboring in vain but then the best thing that can happen to us is that he will give us the promises and he has given us so much uh, that we even think it is much more than we were expecting let me try to put in point to itemize for you all those things i've been reading to you concerning the best that he has promised you number one it is to draw sinners to salvation through our messages that's what we want that's what will give us joy that's the best he has promised us and we cannot wish for anything greater than that that when you preach as a soul winner you preach as an evangelist you give out the word to the sinners who have not known the lord that by the power of the spirit of god he'll be drawing sinners to salvation through your messages number two it is to honor your word in prayer you all he honors your word in prayer he says i have appointed him as i was with moses i'll be with you as i was with elijah i will be with you you decree a thing and i will honor your word in prayer number three it is to rebuild the broken walls of shattered lives through our ministration there are many people whose lives are shattered they are torn apart and they come into our congregation and we want the spirit of the lord to be so mightily present upon us that when we declare the word of god their broken shattered lives will be uh, healed will be brought together again and god will use you now to comfort those who are sorrowful to encourage those who are discouraged to restore those who are backsliding and to bring together broken families in jesus name number four it is to grant growth and expansion to his church and kingdom through your efforts and outreaches that's the promise of the lord and that's the best we are getting from the lord in this new year number five it is to silence satan and to release his captives through the authority that has been given unto you do you know that this week you are going to have a new authority a new power that as you go back to your location and go back to the field of ministry 
many captives are going to be released through your authority and anointing and power in Jesus name all this and many more the Lord has promised to do for us God's best is waiting for you and you are going to receive of that best in Jesus name now we've been talking of the best of God being available for you and it will have been very very easy there would have been no problem at all why if not for this thing I'm going to tell you now there is the flesh there is the world there is the devil and these three are united together in conspiracy knowing the great thing God has promised you and they do not want that thing to be fulfilled that's why there is a test if there were no devil if the world were not there if the flesh were not tracing its ugly head and if all these three were not determined to keep us away from enjoying the best of God it would have been very easy to receive and to retain what the Lord has granted us has promised us that he is his very best continually and permanently on the other side even the problem with ourselves a pride and impatience had not been appointed by the prince of this world to fight and hinder us until we get to the very gates of heaven our entrance into his rest would have been very easy would have been uncontested but then there's the pride of the canal nature there's the pride of the depraved nature and there is the impatience that is a following after us and these two enemies within with the enemies without they combine together and if we do not take care the best that the lord has promised we may miss them but you will not miss them in jesus name you see there is a test that's why you find that as you look at your bible you'll find the language of the bible and the bible is telling you that there's a test you are passing through it uses words like wrestling we wrestle it uses words like crucifying the flesh it says they that walk in the spirit they have crucified the flesh with the affections thereof it shows you there is a wrestling it shows you there's a fighting it shows you there's a crucifixion that is necessary it even says we fight the good fight of faith all those uh, words all the use of that language that language is telling you that there is a test in fact there are times we have to flee flee also youthful laws and there are times we need to resist the devil resist the devil and it will flee from you and there are times we need to contend contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints there are times we need to mortify our members which are upon the earth there is a time of mortification and you see all those words whether you call it crucifixion of the flesh mortification of our members on earth or fighting a good fight of faith or we wrestling against principalities and powers everything combining to tell us there is a test and you are going to overcome in that test that brings us now to point number two great test and wrestling of favored saints as you look at the word of god if you are favored of the lord if you are called of the lord and god calls you to a special ministry a special assignment what you discover is there is a test before you and as i look at the scriptures with you you will be convinced that the test may appear small the test may appear great the test may appear a kind of insurmountable thing or the test might, might appear easy but whether it is easy or difficult whether you can easily go over it appears insurmountable we know that there is a test after the lord has given you the promise of his best turn with me to exodus chapter 16. exodus chapter 16 you know as we're talking about the children of israel you know that the lord really promised them great 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 things things he never promised to the people before he promised them the very best and here again in the passage i'm going to give to you he gave them a wonderful promise and this wonderful promise with it he attached a test exodus chapter 16 and i'm reading from verses 4 and 5 then said the lord unto moses 
Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. That I may prove them, that I may test them, prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. Can you see the Lord telling us very clearly here? He said, I'm going to test them. I'm going to prove them. I'm going to test their love for me. I'm going to test their faith in me. I'm going to test their consecration unto me. I'm going to test their faithfulness to my word. I'm going to test their loyalty unto me as the captain of their salvation. I'm going to test their dependence upon me. I am going to test their patience with me. I'm going to test their commitment to the statutes and the law and the judgment that I've given them. I'm going to test their deadness to self and their deadness to the world. All those things will be tested in our lives as ministers of the gospel. You cannot go if God has given you the best, if God has promised you the best, you cannot go without a test. It's going to test you. Lovest thou me more than all these things? He will test your love. Is going to test you. When the Son of Man cometh back into this world, will he find faith on the earth? Is going to test your faith. Is going to test your consecration. Do you love me more than the material blessings he has given you? Are you willing to serve him at any cost, at all cost, consecrated to him, devoted unto him, yielded completely unto him? Is going to test your faithfulness. Because we are told that Moses was faithful in all his house. Moses, my servant, is not so. Who is faithful in all that I commanded him. And the Lord is going to allow some things to happen. That will test whether you will be found at your post. That will test whether you are so committed to the Lord. And you are faithful to the word of the Lord. It's going to test how loyal you are. To the doctrine he has placed in your hand. It's going to test how patient you are. When you are expecting something to come. Promotion to come. Elevation to come. You are expecting some good words and kind words. And you are expecting a kind of a broad ministry. And greater involvement in the kingdom of God. Oh, yes, the Lord is going to do it. He has the very best for every one of his children. Why doesn't he do it then immediately? And make me to just have that great ministry. That everybody will hear about. Well, first of all, it's going to test your patience. How are you able to wait patiently? How are you able to wait and not uh, turn the hand of anybody, not twist anything, not distort anything, not campaign in any way, not, not go into any political gimmicks, but then just understand that I'm waiting here for the Lord. He has promised the Lord, I'm going to leave it in his hand. He is the one going to accomplish it. The Lord is going to test your patience. He's going to test your commitment to sound doctrine. How sound are you? Because you see, false doctrine will come at your doorstep. And the Lord is permitting it, he's allowing it to come, so that he will test your commitment to sound doctrine. Now you know that sanctification means being dead to the world. Completely dead to the world. And many of us, we even preach sanctification. And we say, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. We say those things without even thinking about them. And the Lord is going to make some things to happen in your life and ministry and location. That will test your deadness to the world, your deadness to the praise of men, your deadness to the world. You see, that's why tests come. And here God himself said in Exodus chapter 16 and in verse 4, he said, I'm going to prove them. I am going to test them. In verse 5, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, that's the test now, on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Now the Lord said on the sixth day, they'll gather double. So that on the seventh day, they will not go out at all, thinking that they are going to gather anything. Look at verse 22. How did they do in this test? In verse 22 of Exodus chapter 16, And uh, it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread. Two omas for one man. That's exactly what the Lord said they should do. He had given that to them. 
because that was the test but then on the seventh day they mustn't go out they mustn't expect anything look at verse 27 and it came to pass that they went out there went out some of the people on the seventh day to gather and they found none and the lord said unto moses how long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws you see the test he promised them and that's the very best there was no other nation who had had manna from heaven for 40 years these were the very best the lord could ever have given to them and yet in that best that he gave to them there was a test attached unto it and some of the people failed that test i'm telling you that a test will come but i pray you'll pay the price and pass the test in jesus name in Judges chapter 3 Judges chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 1 now these are the nations which the Lord left you see when Joshua conquered the land of Canaan he divided unto the children of Israel and then we are told some of the people some of the nations were left these are the nations which the Lord left why to test to prove Israel by them even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war at the least such as knew nothing thereof namely the five lords of the philistines and all the canaanites and the sidonians and the hivites that dwell in mount uh, lebanon from mount uh, Beal hermon unto the entering in at hamath and they were to prove israel by them it was for a test for the children of Israel to know whether they were hearkening unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. You see, some things will happen in your life, in your location, in your ministry. And these things will be allowed, permitted by the Lord, so that he will test you. And these tests will come whenever the Lord has promised something good for you. Something grand, something great, and the best for you. The Lord will see what's his attitude now. Does he love the blessing more than the blesser? Does he love the gift more than the giver? Does he love the possession more than the one that rained down the possession? Does he love the ministry more than Christ? Does he love activity? and position more than the one that is granting him the privilege and the promise and the position the lord is going to test you and as these tests will come upon your life remember they are to test you to know whether you love the lord whether you have faith in god whether you are loyal to the lord whether you will keep faithful unto him whether you'll be committed to sound doctrine and whether you'll be fully dependent upon him and whether you remain dead to self and the devil and dead to the world and dead to the things of the flesh in matthew chapter 16 matthew chapter 16 reading now from verse 17 and jesus answered and said unto him blessed art thou simon by jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed these unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What's that? That's the best from Christ the lord looked at peter he had looked at all the disciples and he asked them what who do men say that i am and then he said some say you are this some say you are that and then he asked them and he said who do you say that i the son of man am and peter as a spokesman of the disciples said you are the very christ the son of god and jesus said flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you as a result of that he said i am giving you the best i can ever give 
Even the angels don't have this one. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Now, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. That's the best. That's the best. But then here came the test. Understand, when God has favored you, when God has given you a great privilege, when God has given you a great revelation, when God has given you a breakthrough in ministry, and you can see the hand of the Lord in your life, the hand of the Lord in your ministry, and he has granted you the very best, be waiting, a test is coming by the corner. Verse 21, from that time forth, began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go on to Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day then peter took him and began to rebuke him saying be it far from thee lord this shall not be unto thee but he turned and said unto peter get thee behind me satan or the keys of the kingdom and the sand with the authority that nobody ever had with the new revelation that he got from above with the open public uh, uh, recommendation as well as commendation that the lord jesus christ gave him he now began to reveal unto him the plan of god for calvary the plan of god for our conversion the plan of god for his crucifixion and when he revealed it it was a test a test whether peter and the rest of the apostles will say the will of the lord be done we submit we surrender that's the will of the father it is not our will but the will of god be done it was a test whether they will totally submit to the absolute will of god for the life of christ and for their own lives but immediately peter failed that test and he took up the lord jesus and he said, Lord, what did I hear you say? That will not ha happen unto you. And then Jesus said, did I give you the key? See what you have said. Get thee behind me, Satan. If, if it were not for the mercy of God that got him away from that identification with Satan and got him back again and restored him, how will he have the realization and the fulfillment of the very best i'm telling you that the test will come and as the test comes upon your life you should be very watchful and very careful so that you will receive the full accomplishment of the promises of the lord for you watch your tongue watch your attitude watch your disposition watch the things you say and watch the things you are thinking because a test may just be coming to you and as the test is coming you may not know it was a test Look at Genesis chapter 22. It's a long passage. I will not be able to read everything. You know the story. The Lord has promised the very best concerning Abraham. He was already old. In fact, at the age of 75, no promise should have come of having a child. And there was nobody before Abraham that had the promise of a child like that at the age of 75. And yet the Lord gave the promise unto him. He waited and waited and waited eventually 25 years after when he became 100 years of age the promise was fulfilled and isaac was born your students of the bible your ministers of the word of god don't you know the meaning of isaac it means laughter and so the bundle of laughter the baby of laughter the source of laughter the culmination the climax of laughter and joy had come in abraham's life and then god said genesis chapter 22 reading from verse 1 and it came to pass after these things that god did test tried tempted abraham and said unto him abraham and he said behold here i am and he said take thy son thine only son isaac thine only son laughter whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which i will tell thee of that was a test and we're told there he tempted him the word tempt there is just he tested him he tried him does he love me more than what causes him laughter 
Does he love me more than the gift I gave him? Does he love me more than the fulfillment of the promise I gave him? Does he love me more than I seek? Does he love me more than that I seek that he loves? And therefore he said, I want to take that I seek back from you. That promise I gave you and I fulfilled, I want to withdraw it. I want you now to concentrate on me. I don't even want that I seek for you now. I love that I seek myself. Give me that I seek and sacrifice him to me. What a great test. Many people that think they love God, they'll jump up and they'll say, Oh God, if that is so, why am I serving you? If you take this from me, what am I going to be happy about in life anymore? You fail the test. If you say, everybody already knows that I've got a child in my old age. If you take this one away now, what am I going to do? You fail the test. But Abraham, he took that child and he went to the mountain where God had showed him, revealed to him. And he was about to sacrifice the child. And the angel of God said, Abraham, Abraham, stay your hand. I don't need your child. I was only testing you. Look at the ram. All the rams on the, the thousands of rams on the hills, they belong to me. If I need any one of them, I'll take them. A ram is there. Go and take the ram and sacrifice. I leave your son for you. But do you know, that act of passing that test, it made Abraham something. Something. Look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah 41. Reading from verse 8. Very quickly, Isaiah 41 verse 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. You see that? He passed that test. And because he passed the test, instead of going back, instead of having less than the best, he became the very friend of God. And it's not only there, even in the New Testament, the New Testament keeps calling Abraham the friend of God. In James chapter 2, James chapter 2, reading from verse 23, and the scripture was fulfilled, which saith Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called, what? the friend of God and so you see passing the test is very important I've shown you about the children of Israel how God gave them the test but they failed I've shown you also concerning the time of the judges concerning the children of Israel there were some nations that were led and they were not all destroyed by Joshua it also test the children of Israel I've also shown you that of Peter, Simon Peter. The Lord had given him the key to bind and to lose. The very best that Christ could offer anyone. And then a test came. Unfortunately, temporarily, he failed the test. And for Samuel now. For Samuel, chapter 13. For Samuel, chapter 13, and in verse 8. For Samuel 13 verse 8 and he tarried seven days this is talking about Saul according to the set time that Samuel had appointed but Samuel came not to Gilgal and the people were scattered from him I said your patience will be tested your endurance will be tested your faith in God will be tested your submission to leadership to Samuel that appointed you will be, te will be tested. Samuel came not to Gilgal and the people were scattered from him. And the people started complaining, are you not a king? Don't you have authority? Can't you take decision? Must we wait for Samuel before we take even every minor decision? He is not here. He said he will come on the seventh day. He has not come. You have tried. You have waited until the seventh day. Whatever kept him awaiting there, well, he is not an angel. He is not perfect. And this is the imperfection of Samuel. And since he is not perfect, will you go ahead and do what you need to do? And maybe they put pressure on him. And he himself yielded to that pressure as the people were scattering away from him. And then in verse 9, Saul said, Bring hither a bond offering unto me, and peace offerings. 
and he offered the burnt offering and it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering that behold Samuel came it was still on the seventh day because it was on that seventh day that Saul made that sacrifice and Saul went out to meet him that he might salute him and Samuel said what hast thou done what have you done you are a king you are not a priest you are not supposed to offer a sacrifice Saul tell me what have you done what hast thou done and Saul said because I saw that the people were scattered from me and they were thinking that I'm not a good leader I'm a weak leader I can't take decision I, can, I don't have initiative and because I saw the people who are thinking I don't have initiative then he said and thou camest not within the days appointed it's your fault it's your fault also that the Philistines gather themselves together at Mishmash therefore said I the Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal lack of faith and I have not made supplication unto the Lord I forced myself I knew I shouldn't have done it I forced myself my conscience was saying why don't you wait a little bit more I forced myself therefore and offered a burnt offering and Samuel said to Saul thou hast done foolishly it was a test you have failed the test now thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God why are you so impatient why couldn't you wait just a few hours more you have not obeyed the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now, he would, would the Lord have established your kingdom upon Israel forever. The Lord was waiting that will pass that test, and he would have established that kingdom upon you forever. But now, verse 14, thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. And the, and the Lord has commanded him to be captain over his people because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. That's a test that will come your way. I pray you will pass that test. And when you pass the test, the, the best that the Lord has been uh, waiting to give you, I believe he will give unto you in Jesus' name now about this congress you have come to this congress and the lord is telling you from this very first day of this congress that the best is waiting for you and during this conf conference or congress you are going to have what you never had before the lord is going to touch you the lord is going to turn you around and the lord is going to surprise you as you come day by day in jesus name the promise you are thinking is very far away is going to come very near you will see it you will taste of the lord and you will see that the lord is good but then there will be a test do you know that during this uh, congress a time will come when you will feel so weary so tired and it will appear that i cannot go for the next message that's going to be a test conquer the love for ease the love uh, to be at ease it's a test you may come over here maybe you have not registered now and uh, you just came in for the message and after this message you are going to be tested it's not going to be deliberate the people they are not going to do it just because i'm saying it but the test will come for some people and there you are you present your papers and you are going to be registered and you're looking for accommodation you thought you are going to be accommodated maybe in a guest house or in the other one or in the other one and then they looked at everything they say brother uh, we're very sorry about this go to that red block you look up you say before you open your mouth think don't you think this may be a test don't you think the lord may allow this don't you think that somebody who is lower than you in office in position in ministration may even have an opportunity in that other place and god may test you god may test you i hope the people will not do that deliberately but god can allow some things to happen and your reaction and your attitude may show whether the best of god is still waiting for you or not but i believe you are going to pass the test 
also you see there will be the test uh, in our lives to feel I think I need sleep in fact uh, the end of year programs were so heavy upon me that I don't know I can just have or oh, look at the program the whole thing is so full how can I be there all the time the test is going to come whether you are going to give yourself to excessive sleep or not but you will avoid excessive sleep you will not allow this body to drag your spirit down and then you know sometimes you are hearing the word of god like this and while you are hearing the word of god somebody from outside the devil will inject a thought in your mind to make you to begin to wonder while god is speaking to you if you accept that wondering if you surrender to that wondering don't you know it's a test whether god can hold your attention or not whether god can have your attention and speak to you and speak directly to you or whether there are some other things more important to you than the message coming from the real hand from the real throne of god it's going to be a test another test is going to come and this test maybe the test has come already since you arrived today since some of you arrived yesterday it is a test of have you heard do you know is a test of talkativeness and gossiping did you know have you seen so and so in the congress no i've not seen him uh, maybe he's not here because i hear that uh, some of the people are leaving i hear that some of the people are no more than they're watching them if you look at all the people that are preaching and you don't see him and you know you know what i'm telling you if you don't know the whole story come back i'll relate everything to you the test is going to come upon your life whether you are here to seek the lord or you are here to gossip or you are here to talk or you are here to do tail bearing or you are here to advertise the devil advertise backsliding advertise some faithfulness advertise departure from the lord or you are here and you say when the lord called me he called me alone and because he called me alone i am going to focus my attention upon the lord if all the rest of the people are here praise the lord if uh, one or two are not here i'm not happy they are not here but i will not allow the test my test uh, to level me down to put my back to the wall i'm going to pass my test and whoever is there whoever is not there i'm going to get the best from the lord i said i'm going to get the best from the lord because you see the lord called me alone he called you alone and when he called you so and so was not there so and so so and such was not there and because he called you alone you want to be able to fulfill the ministry that god has called you into and therefore you are not here for tail bearing for gossiping for talking here and there in isaiah isaiah chapter 51 in verse 2 here is what the lord is telling us concerning uh, this man abraham he said look unto your father abraham and unto sarah that uh, bear you for i called him alone and blessed him and increased him you see you as a minister of the gospel this is what you need to realize i called him alone and blessed him and increased him and therefore you focus your attention upon the lord even after i've said what i said the lord can still allow the test to come to you and somebody that is bubbling with gossip somebody that is bubbling with talking and talking may still come to you i pray god will make you overcome them that you will have the victory you will pass every test in jesus name you will drive away anything and everything that will come to disturb you to defile you or to devour your sacrifice you will discipline self you will refuse to give in to tiredness of soul or tiredness of the spirit you'll be persistent in prayer whatever the devil may want to do you have overcome already i said you have overcome already now the last point glorious rest for fearless souls the fearless souls are the people that said the lord has called me 
and he has called me so that I will fulfill the ministry. And I'm going to move on. Whatever happens, whatever does not happen, I want to be faithful unto the Lord. I know I'm favored of the Lord already and I want to be a fearless soul. The promise of the Lord that he has given us is to give us final rest and full rest. And uh, please be patient with me a few minutes as I tell you about the rest that we find in Scripture. And as we come to the beginning of this year, and here we are, this is January 1st. And the Lord is making us from the Mount of Pisgah, from the Mount of Transmigration, to look ahead for the rest of the year. And the Lord is saying, what are you going to have? For the rest of the year and he's giving us a promise that he will go with us he will walk with us he will cooperate with us we'll be partners together in ministry he promises that he will give us rest in exodus chapter 33 exodus chapter 33 reading from verse 14 exodus 33 Verse 14, and he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give you what? I will give you what? I will give you rest. Now I need to explain to you. Because you see, many people do not understand what rest is all about. And you say, well, what does that really mean? When it says, I will go with you, my presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Number one, understand, sinners and backsliders are restless. If there is sin in the boat, there will be no peace. If there is sin in the heart, there will be no rest. No rest of mind. There will be anxiety. There will be worry. There will be condemnation. There will be heavy burden. There will be restlessness in the soul because of the sin that is present there. In Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. And in verse 20. It says, But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest whose waters cast up mire and dirt the wicked people the sinners the backsliders they're like the troubled sea that cannot rest there is no peace in verse 21 there is no peace says my god to the wicked therefore the very first thing god does when you come to the lord is that he gives you rest as a sinner you've never known the peace of god You've never known the rest in Christ. The very first thing he does at conversion is that he gives you rest. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'll take the guilt away. I'll take the condemnation away. I'll take the body away. I'll take the anxiety away. I'll take the worry away. You will be able to rest in the bosom of Christ because now your sins are forgiven. If you knew the Lord before and you have gone into sin, you will discover that when a believer backslides and he goes into sin, there will be no rest again. There will be agitation. There will be anxiety. There will be fear. There will be turbulence within there will be trouble and it will be torturing him within that even when he tries to sleep he cannot sleep because he knows the prince of peace is no more there in his life he has backsliding and if you are a backslider there is no rest for the backslider but the lord is calling you that he wants to give you rest as well psalm 116 psalm 116 and in verse 7, return unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. See how the Lord has preserved your life. See what the Lord has done for you. If you are backsliding and there's restlessness and lack of peace in your life now, return, return unto thy rest, O my soul. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. He's still giving you the promise that he says he will give you rest. Then there is rest from sorrow. Isaiah chapter 14. Isaiah chapter 14. Reading from verse 3. Isaiah 14, 3. And it shall come to pass, 
in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve from today the Lord will give you rest from sorrow rest from your fear and rest from the bondage if there is any bondage any affliction any kind of captivity exile you have gotten into the Lord will deliver you and it will grant you rest from your sorrow in Jesus name there's another kind of rest and it is found in Deuteronomy chapter 12 and verse 10 Deuteronomy chapter 12 and in verse 10 But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, and when he giveth you rest from all your enemies, the word all there is important, no single enemy remaining, he will grant you rest from all your enemies round about, so that you will dwell in safety. For the church, there's a kind of rest in Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. Rest because Saul the persecutor had become converted. I'm believing God this year that the champions of persecutors, the chief of persecutors in your localities, in your local churches, they're going to be converted in Jesus name. And as those champions and chiefs of uh, persecutors get converted, the churches in your local government, the churches in your region, the churches in your state and the churches in your nation will have rest in Jesus' name. Do you know that we also need even physical rest? We who are the servants of the Lord. He giveth his beloved sleep. You know, many times we are laboring and walking, we are running up and down until we are almost collapsing. And we feel guilty if we rest at any time. And yet, here is what the Lord is telling us in Mark chapter 6 and verse 31. Mark chapter 6, verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. God even grants us periodic rest so that we can recuperate, so that we can renew our strength, so that all the waning, all the weakening, and all the things that are happening will be able to have refreshing from the Lord again. And then there is rest and quietness of spirit. Everybody is uh, troubled, everybody is agitated, everybody is worried, everybody is fearful. But then God grants you within you the quietness of spirit and rest in your soul. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, reading from verse 15. In Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15, here is what we read. For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and in confidence shall your strength be we know that the lord has promised that for us for the children of israel they would not but we want the peace of god we will have it in jesus name in uh, the psalm psalm 94 psalm 94 reading from verse 12 psalm 94 from verse 12 blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity, until the peach be digged for the wicked. Maybe you have been chastised, you have been disciplined for something you did that was wrong. The Lord is saying he will give you rest from the days of adversity. Now, with all this rest that we have, there's also another kind of rest. This one is called millennial rest. This one is reserved for the time of the millennium. And at that time of the millennium, there's a kind of rest the Lord is going to give to the people of God. And I pray that you will have part in that millennial rest in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 7. Isaiah 14 verse 7. The whole earth is at rest. 
Satan is bound in the bottomless pit. The Antichrist has been silenced. The great tribulation is over. And the saints of God coming from the marriage supper of the Lamb, they, are, they have come with Christ. Thousands and thousands of his saints. And now they come to reign on the earth. And then the whole earth is at rest. And it's quiet. They break forth into singing. I pray you all be there. And then there is a final rest in the kingdom of God. When all the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we are with him and we reign with him and we shall be with him forever. In Revelation chapter 14. Revelation chapter 14 verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me. Right? Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Well, the Lord has already given us the promises. He says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. In this uh, Congress, this week, the Lord has provided the best for you. He has uh, promised the best for you. And I pray that nothing will hinder you. You will get the very best of the Lord in Jesus' name. Not only that in your ministry and in your family and all throughout this year and for the rest of your life. The Lord says he's been thinking about you. And he has a good plan. He has a good purpose for you. He says he has the very best reserved for you. He says I will do a new thing. Would you like to know it? Would you know it? He says he will even make streams of waters and rivers in the desert. The Lord will give you all that he has promised. He will hasten his word to perform it. Before we pray, look at Psalm 81. Psalm 81, verse 13. Oh, that my people are hacking unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. All through this week, in this Congress, and all through this year, in your own individual lives, and all through our lives, the Lord is expecting that as he is giving us the best you will hearken, you will listen you will pay attention, you will walk in the ways of the Lord and then in verse 14 I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries don't fight with carnal weapons don't oppose anyone, don't criticize anyone, all through this congress there should be no criticism or you, you just come in here, you say, I'm not looking to the preacher, I'm not looking to the singers, I'm not looking to any man, I'm not looking to any woman. I am going to get the best from them through anyone that may be ministering in Jesus' name. Their grammar, that will not matter to me. Their way of speaking, that will not matter to me. Their pronunciation, that will not matter to me. And their method of preaching, that will not matter to me. All I know is that whoever is standing there, whoever is uh, opening the pages of scripture, whoever is uh, reaching out and telling me the word of God, I am going to get the best. I said you are going to get the best. And the Lord said, if you have that right attitude, he will subdue your enemies. He will turn his hand against your adversaries. In verse 16, he should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. That's the very best. The finest of wheat. And honey out of the rock. With honey out of the rock. The children of Israel, they missed it. They only got water out of the rock. They thought, we have got the best already. We have got water out of the rock. And God said, that is nothing yet. I have something greater for you. I have honey out of the rock for you. If you will only listen to me, don't be satisfied with the blessing of uh, the last Congress. Don't be satisfied with the water you got out of the rock, 1995, 1994, 1993. Here is a new year and the Lord is saying for this Congress of the new year, it is not water out of the rock, it is going to be honey out of the rock. And with honey out of the rock, shall I have satisfied thee. The Lord is going to satisfy you. Bring your empty cups, not a few. And the Lord will fill everything. Will anything hinder you? Will the devil hinder you? Will any man be able to hinder you? No, you are going to get the best from the Lord. Don't allow sleep either uh, to hinder you. Rise up now and say, Lord, here I am. I'm going to get the best. Here I am, I'm going to get the best. The test may come. 
the test may come it may come in any form in the, it may come in any way but make up your mind you are going to overcome you are going to overcome and you are going to pass all that test and you are going to move on into the best that the Lord has provided for you. Let this Congress be different. Different in your life. Let it make a mark in your life that the very best the Lord has provided for you, you are going to have. And when the devil is trying to organize and orchestrate and plan the test and for people to come and disturb you and hinder you and gossip and talk and tell and do tell bearing remember it is a test and you will not fail the test you will not branch aside into gossiping into tell bearing and you will not allow your tongue or yourself to be used by the devil if you really want the blessing of God, you are going to pass the test. The Lord will test your love. He will test your patience. He will test your faith. He will test your endurance. He will test your loyalty. He will test your faithfulness. He will test your commitment to sound doctrine. He will test your deadness to the world and deadness to the flesh and deadness to sin. When the test will come, when the test will come you promise the lord i am not going to fail the test i am not going to fail the test all the people that followed gideon they were tested they were tested and they were told if anybody is afraid let him go back home thousands of them they failed that test they had fear in them somebody had been pumping tormenting words in their mind and because of the fear they failed they failed the test and thousands of those who had followed Gideon they went back because they failed the test they were afraid and of the 10,000 remaining God said there's still a test another test more another test more bring them to the riverside and see how they drink the water and see if they want personal comfort personal pleasure personal satisfaction they want to quench their thirst and they forget about the battle of the Lord many of them again failed the test only 300 only 300 only 300 passed the test they passed the test at the riverside will you pass the test will you pass the test or will you grumble because of water will you grumble because of food will you grumble because of a place to sleep will you grumble because you don't have a place in a challenge will you grumble because you don't have a mattress will you grumble because the conveniences of the congress uh, facilities are not available to you if you will endure if you will endure and pass the test the best of god is waiting for you my presence will go with you and i will give you rest i will give you rest look at all the promises of god that he has given you take those promises one by one stand on those promises of god that's the best the lord has for you if you need restoration you can be restored you need to be saved you can be saved if you need to be forgiven the secret sins you have committed you can be forgiven if you need encouragement from the lord he can give you that encouragement right now illumination from the lord you can get it right now impartation from the lord you can have it right now take the promises of the lord brood over them think over them meditate over them do not allow any other word, words of men, to come into your heart. Let it be the word of the Lord alone. Let it be the word of the Lord alone. And close your ears to any other thing that is negative. And then the Lord is going to impart the best of blessings upon your life.
the devil will come to test you with the spirit of fear with the habit of gossiping and telling he's going to test you he may even test you with somebody within this congress bringing false doctrine discouraging you from standing totally on the totality of the word of god it is a test the old prophet went to the young prophet and told him and said the lord has spoken to me to bring you back to drink water to eat in this place that test may come to you from somebody you love somebody you respect somebody you know is higher than yourself somebody you know has been before you in the ministry if the test comes to you don't fail the test like that young prophet he failed the test he came back and he was eating he was a torn apart by a lion pay the price consecrate yourself pass the test pay the price overcome wrestle and make sure that you do not allow anything anyone anybody any spirit any idea any thought to make you lose the best that he has for you i will get the best i will possess the best i will receive the best the best of the promises of god will be fulfilled in my life the test may come i will overcome the test may come i will pass the test i'll keep on looking unto jesus christ the author and the finisher of my faith and i will not allow anything to make me fail the test if you make up your mind if you consecrate yourself to the lord if you don't allow anybody to tell you there is no more consecration there's no more submission there is no more absolute surrender there is no more yieldedness if you don't allow anybody to tell you there's no more consecration if you will consecrate yourself to the lord the best of the lord is waiting for you and the lord says i will feed you with the finest of wheat and i'll give you honey out of the rock 